Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. This is Phoenix Raccoonus coming with you with another toy review video. Now, this week's video is going to be Transformers Studio Series 54 Megatron from the first live action Transformers movie. Uh, I've been seeing this one for quite a while now. Um, I'm like, well, I'll pick them up later. Well, later f became yesterday. <laughs> I happened to be at uh, at Walmart uh, picking up some essentials, and I wound up seeing him. And I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and pick him up. Uh, besides, he was the only one that I haven't gotten so far. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of Transformers at the Walmart I went to. Uh, there were some that I just passed entirely. Uh, mostly because I wasn't interested in the character. I didn't like the design. And, uh... And then, of course, uh... They only had, like, the reissues of, uh... Of Astro Train. They had, like, a whole fleet of Astro Trains there. So, and I already got him and I reviewed him. So, don't need another. Uh, so... Yeah, I went ahead and just got him. But... Enough rambling. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the packaging. As you can tell, each and every Transformer, in some way, shape, or form, from Studio Series to the regular run, has an open window which showcases the figure, and it is awesome looking. You know, I cannot wait to open this up. Uh, now, I have seen other reviews of this figure, but watching a review is one thing having it in your hand and playing around with it that's totally different yeah i just heard myself say that <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and move on anyway uh let's go ahead and take a look at the box and now as you can tell it's got this really great piece of artwork here um you know that is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, the, the lettering, Studio Series 54, Megatron, Transformers, uh, the big old red letters on the side, Generations, Takara Tomy, and boom, there we go. And of course, we're gonna take a look at this side, which shows off, you know, a rather, rather, rather bow, uh, rather great piece of artwork with bow back, black background. Um, the only thing that I do have a gripe, and I don't know if everyone has this gripe, but I think that instead of keeping, you know, the boxes all uniform and stuff, why not just have their faction symbol show off depending on the figure? Uh, I mean, it's great that they show off the faction, but it's always showing off the Autobot symbol. I mean, when it comes down to Decepticons, show them the same love. I mean, but again, that's just me. Now, we're going to go ahead and turn it around on the other side, and we see... see a close-up of his robotic, uh, his robotic pudding and uh, the old Studio Series on the side with the number 54 on there. Now, this is a Voyager class figure, folks, so it's got some, uh, some height to it. Uh, now, I don't have that many Studio Series figures left. I think the only one I got left is... Uh, the uh, the Optimus Prime figure from the Bumblebee movie. That is the only one I got left. So, you know, all the other ones like, uh, you know, Optimus Prime from Dark of the Moon, a studio series, a studio series Starscream from the first Transformers movie, and uh, the studio series Bumblebee from the Bumblebee movie. Uh, those wound up getting uh, liquidated and sold, so 
I don't have those anymore. But I will bring up uh, the big bot to do size comparisons and whatnot. So one more take, one more look at his box, and, and let's just adjust the angle. There we go. And here we have his product shots, showing him in his post up and everything in his robot mode as well as his Cybertronian jet mode, which was pretty good. Uh, that was pretty interesting. I think that was the inspiration for the mode that Megatron had in uh, Transformers Prime. Uh, you know, so that was pretty awesome. I liked it. So, uh, of course, like I said, this is a Voyager size figure. Um, it has, you know, um, you know, just a quick, you know, some quick wording in multiple languages. Uh, big screen inspired, scale, detail, the backdrop, and it says Mission City Battle. So there is a backdrop to this. So, so we're going to go ahead and take one more look. Right, take one more look at this, this figure inside his stasis containment pod, otherwise known as his box. <laughs> and uh, uh, in the words of Octobotomus, uh, well, we're going to go ahead and open them up. And in the words of Octobotomus, we're going to see how cool he really is. Okay, there he is, posed up with his accessory and everything. And I like to say this is a pretty boss figure. I mean, this is a different, different take on on Megatron, as we have seen throughout so many iterations over the past 30 plus years. And uh, man, uh, this basically, when the first movie came out, because this is basically what he's modeled after, uh, it gave a totally different look to all the characters, gave them fresh blood. It also brought in a whole new generation of fans. So, whenever they see Megatron, they see this guy. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you can tell that, uh, you know, he's got a lot of, you know, he's basically painted almost, you know, silver almost all the way around. Um, you know, whatever is dark gray is basically, you know, for like the internal mechanisms. Now, this isn't the first Studio Series Megatron that we have gotten before. We have gotten the one uh, from, I believe, Revenge of the Fallen. Uh, I think we also received one from uh, uh, Dark of the Moon as well. Um, you know, no, also from Revenge of the Fallen, this was a variation where he had a bat, uh, battle damage face and then of course you know I think it was uh, Dark of the Moon where we had that kind of tanker truck you know Megatron whose head was still battle damaged but he looked like a rusted out hulk of a, of a machine so um, <clears throat> so you know, that's what we are seeing right now. Now, I have him with the only accessory that he has, and it's this, this uh, chain and uh, mace uh, type of motif. Now, um, it's a very solid and stiff accessory. It's n it is not, um, it doesn't bend. Uh, it's, it's not you know the the mace is not being held by a chain which would have been more preferable really in my opinion because at least it gives you an op you know you see that looseness of the chain or at least more of a articulated type of chain to where it will bend so you can put it in nice little action poses um, again you know this accessory I find kind of useless now uh, if anyone knows or hears of a third party creating an add-on kit 
for this figure, I would definitely like to know. And if this includes like a type of posable type of chain and mace uh, weapon, oh, I definitely want to know about it. So, uh, so let's go ahead and uh, oh, before I forget, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Uh, so, in addition to this accessory here, we also have let me pull him out of the way the the Mission City battle here going on, and I, I like that the Studio Series has these uh, you know these types of backdrops to where you can pose. Though I do have to say, when it comes down to the uh, uh, to the size of the um, of the stages, they're not exactly all that accommodating because I mean, let's face it, these are Voyager class figures, and they they have to be able to move around. This that stage pretty limits their ability to move. I like the attempt; it's great, uh, but in the long run, you know, this stage is going to wind up you know, being put back in its box again, so, okay, but, um, again, you know, that's, uh, that's what's on here, so, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, take time to go ahead and remove this stage and put them on the background where I normally have most of my figures. Okay, so... Now that we've gotten his accessory and his display stand out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the figure itself. Now, from what you can tell right off the bat, uh, he's got a lot of molded detail, really great paint applications on the figure itself, on his uh, panels or scales, on his chest, on his legs, his feet, uh, to differentiate the uh, hands <laughs> and other interior detail they left it at a really dark gray plastic uh the rest of it's just been painted silver i now i'm not sure if you're able to see this so i'm gonna try and come on focus oh for god's sake man i hate this stinking camera on this phone now i used to love it originally when i got this phone Alright, that's as close as I'm going to get, folks. Uh, you can tell that he does have that one red dot for both eyes to indicate his eyes. Looks like they're following you, too. <laughs> uh, so it does show that he does have some good paint applications on there. Uh, now, unlike the previous versions of the Studio Series Megatron, uh, the tank mode from... Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon. Um, there were some different colors on there as well to indicate other parts on there. I kind of wish that they had done that with this one as well, uh, other than gray and black and silver. I wish they put in at least some gold on there, like I said, to differentiate different pieces of mechanics within there. But, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, now at this time, let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation. Now, his head is on a ball joint and a swivel. Uh, so, you're able, he's able to go ahead and swivel his head up or back, up. He can turn left, right. He can look up. He can look down. You can do a 360, but you gotta trick the head in, and because there is a hollow point in the back, you're able to go ahead and complete that, and there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So his his arm is on a swivel joint. He can do 360. He can also move out like so. Um, he does have a bicep swivel, which is also on a mushroom peg. Nope. Sorry. That's not it. Oh, it's not on a mushroom peg. I stand corrected. Sorry. Uh, his arm can bend at 90 degrees. 
uh, there is no wrist rotation it can fold in on itself but that is due to transformation which I'm gonna go ahead and keep like that because this will um, you will be seeing that again you know during the transformation process we're gonna do the same thing here again a little swift a little twist bend and hands are hidden now all right now um there is no let me move him back just a bit there we go um there is no ab crunch or waist rotation i wish there was but um you know but i think due to the transformation of this of this figure that it was not possible uh however he can kick out let's see whether or not well i was gonna say he can probably balance yay he's able to balance okay let's try that from further away maybe you can get a good So he is able to balance, but you gotta do it just right, and that's gonna happen. <laughs> the nearest fart is going to wind up knocking him out. Uh, so he can uh, kick out. He does have a th upper thigh rotation. Uh, he can kick out like so. He can kick back. Uh, he can go at least over 90 degrees. So that is cool. He does have ankle tilt, so you can have him in those awesome wide angle stances. And I'm gonna try and, oops, lost it. So I definitely need to go ahead and invest in a in a large table to where I can be able to set this up properly. I probably should have gotten the a the masterpiece size scale. So but hey I used what I had for this so but other than that you know he's got good range of posability great uh display presence now this is where yeah this is where I have had a lot of problems it's the transformation from this mode into his Cybertronian jet mode um, this I have to say this is the third time I'm filming this segment because each and every time I wind up basically spawn a whole slew of obscenities throughout the film <laughs> so i'm going to try and find the best pieces out of if this is successful the best pieces you know and just splicing them together or just using the last uh filming that i'm doing today but despite all that we're going to go ahead and go through transformation so we're going to put the hands down i going to go ahead and stand them upright just a bit. Put his head forward. And there we go. Okay. So one of the things we're going to do, like we did before, we're going to move his hands inside his forearms. We're going to turn him around. Now, for those that, when I didn't show off the back earlier, um, just trying to save time because oftentimes I tend to ramble on and it takes up too much time so I'm trying to cut that out anyway uh, we're gonna open up his back like so and as you can tell the nose cone to his jet mode is in here so we're going to pop that in open that up pop that in and there we go and move this portion in and snap that in boom now that that's taken care of, 
we're going to go ahead and I'm not sure if you're able to see this. I'm going to go ahead and bring this oops, closer to you. And focus. Thank you. So you see this thin gray piece of plastic is tabbed into here. We need to untab that. Ah, there we go. Now, we just need to untab it. Once it's untabbed, we gotta swivel this portion down. And let me see, I think that's it. We just have to swivel it to where we're, just, we're having difficulty in trying to swivel it down. So, there we go. If you feel a soft, you know, snap, then good. You're in the right area. Now, Next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to raise these arms up, like so. We're going to turn these in. Okay, now that that portion is done, try to make sure all this is in focus. We're going to turn the head around. I'm going to put that in, like so. Make sure this portion is in. And there you go. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to try and be calm about this because this is the third time I've tried to go through this process of transformation. Each and every time has been nothing more than a, than a clusterfuck, to say the least. So now that that is down, we're going to take this portion here that we've built up and we're going to lift it up. Trying to maybe move these hands. Uh, now, one thing that I keep on forgetting to mention until it's already too late. There are tabs right here and right here. There are slots right here and right here. Now, I do want to tell you in advance they are going to be the bane of your existence because they will not stay flushed. So just forewarning, you know, just to let you know and that you don't go out going around saying, oh, he never told me that. Yes, I did. This will be the bane of your damn existence. If you're able to keep them flushed, great. Now, another thing. Um, I know these things do come with instructions. And after a third time, I'm pretty much an old hat at this. But I do want to show you. There are certain areas that do not tell you that certain areas need to be moved or untapped. This is going to be one such area. So what we've done so far, I want to show you right now. What we need to do next is we need to take this back spur and fold it down like so. Now, now I'm going to show you what is on the instructions now. Okay. So that is the step we just took. Here is step 12. Now, focus. Yeah, kind of anyway. Uh, so it's telling you to pull the back portion open. The only problem is you have this. Doesn't mention that. Doesn't mention that it is being held by a peg, which is inside the section. You need to open that up and move these wings down. You need to do them on both because one is tighter than the other. Now you can go ahead and open this up like so. Do the same thing with the other like so. Now we're not going to worry about this this tail fin here. So now we're going to go ahead and open this up. Oh, hang on. We got to turn this around. Okay, so now, as you see all this, we need to open this up, fold that out, fold this out, and fold this portion out. So, 
Now, as you can tell, there's an inner piece right here. You gotta open this up, you gotta flip this around, and there is a pig right there, and it's gonna go into that port where my thumb is at. So we're gonna take care of that now. Like that. Now, just to go ahead and repeat the step in case anyone missed it, I'm gonna open this up like so, unfold it, unfold it, and unfold right there. Don't try and pull it any further, otherwise you're gonna break it. I'm gonna unfold this portion on the inside. I'm gonna take this portion and fold it out. And like we did before, I'm gonna peg this right there. All right, now, what we're going to do next is we're gonna take this hollow piece here, I'm gonna fold it in on itself. So I'm gonna take it one leg at a time. Now, again, this is another example of where the instructions that Hasbro puts out are not detailed. And this pisses off a lot of people, myself included. So one thing you will notice is this slot right here. This will go into this tab Right here and you see it right here on this end here you'll see it on this tab on this slot right there so you need to go ahead and slot those in like so now one other thing and I better go ahead and make a mention of it now because I will forget there is a tab right here where my pencil is pointing at and right here there is a slot at the bottom of the heel spur right there you gotta snap that in there you don't have to put the whole foot just the heel spur now again this is where a lot of things do not behave themselves all right so for right now it is behaving gotta move this this fin back here a little bit further we're going to do the same thing with the other leg. And right there. Now this is what I was talking about earlier where these where certain areas do not tend to stay flush. Come on, see? There it goes again. All right. Now now these, these tail fins here, let's see if I can find it, I know I had it, ah there it is, okay, so there is, there we go, there is a tab right here, there is a port right there you need to plug those in now one other thing that you will definitely want to know about there on either side of this tail fin right here and right here there are tabs they go into these slots right here at the oops try and keep this in front right here and right there and that hang on folks you need to go ahead and push these the side of the legs in all right now okay so we're not done yet. <clears throat> We're almost there. And honestly, this may be the video that I will pretty much air. Because I have yet to cuss a whole lot. Or get totally upset. But there's one more thing we need to do before this transformation is complete. As you can tell, these wings are not right side up. They need to go ahead and go over, which is why these wings are on a swivel right here. So, ah, blast it. And of course, stay detached. 
So, one thing that I do want to make a mention of. They're kind of hooked up right here. You need to disconnect it, hook, unhook, and swivel. Now, just to let you know, there is a pig right here, or I'm pointing at it, right where my my pencil is. You need to put, there it is. You need to put, put that pig into this slot here. So just slide it at the end. And gotta do the same thing on the other side. Well, I think which is probably what we should have done originally. Okay, there we go. Now, we gotta go ahead and do this tail fin again. Because it's being a butt. Alright, I'm back. Yeah. That's the one thing I have had problems with this figure when transforming it into this vehicle mode. Is that a lot of things will not stay flush. I don't know if it's just my copy. Or if that's the consensus throughout the whole run of this particular figure. Um, it looks cool, but it's not as streamlined as it showed in the movie. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's not a bad looking vehicle mode, but um, it's just way too much in terms of... in terms of the issues that it has with trying to keep everything you know connected and everything some will stay connected for a short period of time then disconnect and others won't connect at all uh, so so if nothing else that's what I got right now so I'm gonna go ahead and do a size comparison and after that I'll give you my final thoughts Okay, folks, and here they are, side by side with Megatron from the first Michael Bay Transformers movie. And then, of course, we got Optimus Prime from the Bumblebee movie. And you can tell the height differences are a lot different. Now, of course, you know, uh... They are supposed to be, I should say Megatron, is supposed to be about maybe a head taller than Optimus to begin with. Uh, but, yeah, it's supposed to be a very imposing figure to begin with. Uh, now, of course, naturally, you know, because of the aesthetics with, you know, with both variations, there's definitely going to be some changes or some differences on this case. Uh, but, you know, they seem to scale pretty well, nonetheless. Uh, you know, of course, you know, I don't have any other Studio Series figures, and it didn't dawn on me to go ahead and bring up any more, <laughs> any other figures that might be able to scale well. So, uh, this is pretty much where I'm going, or I should say, this is pretty much the only size differences I can think of at this point in time. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the big bot out of the way, and we're going to go ahead and do our final thoughts. Okay, so here are my final thoughts to, uh, to Studio Series 54 Megatron from the first Transformers movie. Before taking him out of the box, I like the paints. Uh, the paint applications. I mean, he was mostly all silver. I see that they took some some effort in putting in certain paint apps. I'm going to try and zoom in on that you know, when it comes down to his face. Now, I'm not sure if it's coming out on camera. I think it is. You can see that you know the red beady eyes on him um you know they did leave you know some regular 
gray plastic on there but that's to basically differentiate you know the working mechanisms uh, as you know from the the outer pieces of his uh, of his exostructure um, now personally I think they could have added a little bit of additional paint applications were needed you know uh, like in the previous incarnations of uh, of Megatron uh, like for Revenge of the Fallen both the tank version as well as the battle damage tank version they added in some gold and whatnot I think this would have helped out a lot too and of course that's just my own personal opinion um, you know in robot form uh, he's got some great posability, some good articulation. The head is funny as hell to do 360. <laughs> um, you know, um, you know, uh, it's great. Uh, transformation, though, up to a certain point, it was it was good, uh, but once we got to those feet. The fact that Hasbro did not bother to make a mention that the inner, the the part that makes up that uh, that rudder, I think that you know, I think that's what it's called anyway. Uh, the you know the that 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 needs to be moved, you know, prior to trying to pull that section from within the back of his thigh or the back of his calf. <coughs> That that would have helped out a lot, honestly. Uh, so, like I said, transformation was good up to that point, and at that point, as you heard <laughs> and saw, I got extremely frustrated. Um, so, if I got frustrated, imagine if you wound up giving it, giving this to a kid. And then it's going to be even worse when they actually break it. Uh, which is why a lot of my videos are geared towards adults. And even then, some of us adults... Uh, yeah, we do get frustrated, you know. Uh, so, that's how I'm saying. I more than likely will not transform him back into his Cybertronian jet mode. Um, it was a great concept in the movie. It looked cool in the movie. It did not translate well with this uh, figure. Uh, it was just way too bulky. It was not as streamlined as it was uh, in the in the feature film. Uh, but figure wise, he looks cool. I, I like him. You know, this was a great take. You know, you know, on this character, uh, I can see you know how Michael Bay wanted to go ahead and do something different with Transformers. And at the very beginning, it did, but you got you got over 30 years of Transformers fans from one form or another, and they were expecting, you know, they were expecting Optimus Prime and Megatron to look somewhat similar to those modes, uh, you know. So. Again, there were some that were not all that pleased about. Uh, there were others that took to it like fish to water, especially this new generation. You know, uh, whenever I watch, <clears throat> whenever I watch videos of where they're introduced or certain Transformers fans are introduced to the OG1 cartoon series, they are surprised. Uh, you know, because it's like, whoa, wait a minute, this is Transformers? So, but again, like I said, I like the ki I like the character. I like this form. It is pretty awesome. It's a great take on it. Uh, transformation, I would have to give it about maybe a five because of what happened, you know, when transforming the back end of the vehicle mode. And... Yeah, it's not so much that uh, the jet mode was, you know, 
was not as streamlined as it was in the in the feature film it was transforming these back lakes the fact that it didn't make it in the instruction books that shows that Hasbro is not paying attention um, and I'm very disappointed with Hasbro on that uh, so if I have to give it a score I'm probably going to be very generous in this. I would more than likely give it a 7. At the very least, or I should say, like I said, I'm being very generous when I say 7. I could have been a total dick and just say, I'd give it a 5. You know, because of that transformation process. Uh, but other than that, um, those are my thoughts, my opinions on this figure. I'd like to hear from you all. What do you think of this figure? Have you gotten this figure? And if you have, you know, would you recommend getting this figure to anyone else? So, you know, leave your answers to these questions or comments or concerns in the comment section down below. Like, share, subscribe to this channel. It will do my channel a whole world of good. Uh, I do have a Patreon page, which I will leave in the description, also down below. Uh, if you'd like to contribute, uh, you know, in any way, shape, or form, again, I do have a Patreon page. Uh, if you wish to recommend a figure, or if you want me to review a figure, uh, there will be information to my PO box, also in the description down below, to where you can send that to me. And uh, this is Phoenix Draconis, and I will catch you all back on the flip side. Peace.